Hi, welcome to another video. It's not very often that I'm genuinely excited to show you guys something, because usually things don't really aim to fix a real issue. But today, I actually have something that does. This is called Human Layer. Human Layer is a Claude Code graphical interface, which you can configure with any model. But it has something new in what it aims to do. It aims to be like superhuman or vim, but for Claude code. Now, what does that mean? Well, it means that the whole interface is mostly used through simple key bindings. For example, you can hit the C key to create a session, or open the command palette with command plus K, and so on and so forth. It is also built to be amazingly fast, as the backend is mostly built on Go which allows it to be relatively fast. It gives you keyboard-first workflows designed for builders who value speed and control. It also allows you to scale AI-first development for your entire team without devolving into a chaotic mess. You can run Claude code sessions in parallel, automatically create work trees, work with remote cloud workers, and much more, which is pretty cool. Currently, it's under a wait list, but that doesn't mean you can't use it. It's just that it's not production ready yet, though it is only currently usable on Mac. To use it, you'd have to go to the releases section, and here you'll see the option to install either via Homebrew or by downloading the package and installing it manually. Once it's installed, you can go ahead and open it, but before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly, with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. And this is what it looks like. You can see the previous sessions you've had, if you've done any. It's very clean and distraction-free. At the bottom, you've got some options like view keyboard shortcuts, themes, and settings as well. All of these have keyboard shortcuts too. So, to open the key bindings menu, you just hit the question mark key and it pops up. You can also hit command plus T to open up the themes menu, which is great. And command shift S opens up the settings panel. Inside the settings panel, you can enable different providers. For example, if you want to use the GLM coding plan, then it's doable. You can also navigate through all of this with keyboard shortcuts, like tab to navigate through elements, and then space to toggle or untoggle. To use a different provider, you'll need to make sure that your Claude settings file is configured accordingly in the main Claude code installation. You can close any modal with the escape button and it closes instantly. You can also view all the shortcuts by hitting the question mark key and it opens up the full list of shortcuts. You can go through them at your own pace or just follow along with me to see how it all works. So, to start a new session, you just hit C. This will open the modal that lets you create a new session. Here, you'll enter the directory where you want it to work. Then you can enter a title if you want to give it a reference name. After that, just enter the prompt. Basically, what you want it to do. For example, I'll ask it to make a simple Minesweeper game. I don't want to stress test its capabilities since it just uses Claude code in the back end anyway. You can also select the model you want to use, such as Opus or Sonnet, along with any additional directories you want it to include. Once everything is filled in, 
you just hit Command plus Enter, and it gets started. Now, here you can see the main interface. On the right of the upper panel, you'll see the to-do list that Claude Code makes, which helps you keep track of everything that's happening, which is really helpful. At the bottom, you have the prompt box where you can type in what you'd like it to work on. You can also fork a session by hitting Command plus Y. You can enable bypass permissions with Option plus Y and enable Auto Accept with Shift plus Tab. You can also archive a session with the E key. But just a caution here, it's very easy to accidentally archive your session by pressing E, so it would have been nice to have a remap option for this, though it doesn't seem possible right now. You can also view the total context usage and even change the model. To scroll between messages, you can hit J to go down and K to go up, which is great. Also, you can instantly jump back to the prompt box by pressing Enter. When it asks for tool call approvals, you'll just hit A to approve or D to deny. If you want to spin up more than one session, you can just hit the C key again to create another. Then you can return to the Sessions tab by pressing G and S together, and from there, you can navigate between all your sessions. To view a diff or file content, just move with the arrow keys and hit I. It shows you the file's content, or the diff of changes, which is also great. If you want to copy a response, just navigate to that message and hit Y, and then you can paste it somewhere else, maybe for checking errors. If you're ever lost in a long thread, you can hit Command-Shift-J, and it'll jump you straight to the latest approval section, so you know where the action is needed. Archiving sessions is a really neat way to keep your workspace clean. It allows you to save completed sessions out of the way while keeping them stored for future reference. That way, you still have everything saved without cluttering your main interface. I recommend archiving with the E key once a task is finished, and then just start a fresh new session. Also, the fork session option is something many of you will appreciate. You can select a specific message in your thread and then fork from there, creating a new branch. This keeps your main session intact while allowing you to branch off into a new idea or direction, while still keeping the context of everything that happened beforehand. This is a feature I've seen in a lot of chat interfaces, and it's awesome to see it here too. I think many of you are really going to like this. One limitation right now is that you can't yet use custom slash commands or agents interactively. By interactively, I mean you won't see autocomplete tooltips as you type. However, if you do type out the command correctly, it will still work. I really hope this gets added soon, because a lot of people use it. It also supports different models, like I mentioned earlier but it would be amazing if it could also support different CL is in the future. Maybe something like the ACP protocol from Zed could be implemented, so people can use whichever agent they prefer. As for themes, it already has some nice ones. Personally, I love the Cat Poochin theme, which, by the way, is set as default here, so that was really cool to see. You can check out the full list of key bindings, to see how you can really maximize your workflows. Unfortunately, you can't remap the keys yet, which is a bit of a letdown. I hope that gets added, because people like having customization. Like, some prefer to keep their key bindings focused on one hand for speed. That would make this much more flexible. And that's pretty much it. You can basically spin up multiple Claude Code instances, work in them, and do so in a really cohesive way, without having to mess around with something like Tmux. It seems to support Git work trees too. I think it might automatically make them, but I'm not entirely sure. So, there's that. It's still in the early stages, but I'm really liking what I see. To be honest, 
I'd place this above all the other Claude GUI, as I've used so far. It supports subagents as well, and it just works seamlessly. You can also use it with the GLM coding plan, which is something I personally do. It comes in really handy, especially if you're a keyboard-first kind of developer. It's fast, it's responsive, and it doesn't hog memory. That's a huge bonus compared to many alternatives. So yeah, I like it. It's open source, lightweight, and super easy to use. And if you're already a Vim or superhuman user, you'll feel right at home here. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.